Building a floor loom is not as hard as it sounds. Every time you learn the name of a part, rig up a harness, or put together some pulleys, you're learning about weaving. So grab your kit and find a nice big rug or drop cloth, because today we're going to go step by step and teach you how to build our very own Harrisville Designs Model A4 floor loom. And by the way, Feel free to pause the video as we go along because we really spare no details. First, we have to prepare our loom. In your loom kit, you'll find bags clearly labeled with all of our hardware. As you build your loom, make sure to run your screws across some soap. This will make them easier to screw in. We include several tools in the kit like the hex nut driver, the ruler, and the screwdriver. But you'll also need a hammer, some soap, and some rags or paper towels. To start, grab 5B, 9C, 9A, 5A, and 9B for sanding and oiling. These parts are gonna make a ton of contact with our yarn, so it's super important that they are smooth. Start off with the 120 grit sandpaper included in the kit, then finish each piece off with the 320 grit sandpaper. Once it's nice and smooth, wipe off the sawdust with a paper towel or rag. Now go ahead and sand the rest of the wooden parts. The rest of the loom should only need a light sanding. Now, using the black hex nut driver, open the can of oil and start wiping a thin coat of oil on each part, making sure to coat every surface of the wooden pieces. Set all the pieces aside to dry for at least 30 minutes, and then apply a second coat. After it's sat for another half hour, go ahead and wipe down each part with a clean cloth. Now we can get ready to build the loom. Grab the parts list and lay out all the parts in the order they appear. Almost every single wooden part has a part number stamped on it, so this should be pretty straightforward. And by the way, as you go through your setup, feel free to use the part schematic at the back of your manual. Your loom kit also includes adhesive labels, which can be super helpful when you're keeping track of the different parts. First, we're going to build the castle, which is the main structure of the loom. For this, you'll need eight one half inch flathead screws and 14 one and a quarter inch flathead screws. And these are the parts we're going to need for this step. To start us off, grab 2A and place it on the floor with the number facing up. Then grab 1A and place it so that the numbers face each other, like this. Now you can go ahead and screw the two parts together using our one and a quarter inch screws. If the screw holes are lined up, they should screw together pretty easily. You shouldn't have to force it. Now you can do the same with 2B and 1B. These parts are going to form the castle uprights and feet of our loom. Now you can place the castle uprights on either side of you with the HD brand on your right and the unbranded castle upright on your left. Next you can go ahead and grab 3A and drop four one and a quarter inch screws into the holes on each corner. Now go ahead and grab 3A and start attaching it to the castle uprights but make sure the part number is facing towards you. And by the way, no need to screw too tightly. We'll tighten the screws later. Now you can do the same with 3B, making sure that the part number is facing the feet of the loom. While we are building our loom, part numbers are usually either hidden or facing the floor. Next, you can stand the castle on its feet and tighten all the screws. This helps the loom settle into its final form. 
You'll also notice that the serial number for your loom is facing up on part 3B. Now we're going to assemble our pulleys. Each pulley assembly requires the same parts, so let's start with one 3.5 inch metal pulley rod, five washers, and four of our pulleys. To help the pulleys move freely, go ahead and apply some soap to the metal rod and the faces of the pulleys. Now we're going to work from the front of the loom, so the HD brand should be on your left. Grab a 3.5 inch metal rod and put it into the hole on the left side of the upper brace. Next, you can go ahead and slide the pulleys and washers onto the rod. Starting with a washer, then a pulley, then a washer, alternating until you get to the end of the rod. By the end, there should be four pulleys and five washers on the rod. Okay, now you can do the same to the other side. To finish the upper part of the castle, we'll need two of the three and a half inch guard pins, as well as part 4A. First, place the guard pins into the small holes on the upper brace. Next, sandwich the whole assembly together by easing 4A into place. The easiest way to do this is to coax the metal pulley rods into the holes first, then use your fingers to ease the guard pins into place. Now you can go ahead and lock it into place by screwing the four one and a half inch screws into the holes on the side of the castle. Next, we're going to work on the lower castle brace of the loom. On the right hand side, there should be three different holes. Starting from the right, insert two of the metal rods into these two holes. Now, you can go ahead and start assembling your pulleys, just like we did before. Next up, do the same on the left hand side, but this time, insert a metal rod into the first hole on the left, like this. And once you have all your pulleys set up, you can grab the two wooden dowels and place them in the remaining holes. These are called lamb stops, and they'll come in handy later. Now you can go ahead and grab 4B and turn it around until the holes line up with the three rods and the two dowels. This will take a little finesse, so take your time and use your fingers to guide everything into place. Once everything is sandwiched together, Grab four one and a half inch screws and begin screwing the pulley assembly together. To build our warp assembly, we'll need these parts, as well as four one and a half inch flathead screws. You can go ahead and turn 5A so that the part number is facing toward you and to your right. Then grab 6A and turn it on its side so that the part number is facing inward and the unnumbered end connects with 5A, like this. Now you can do the same with 6B. Next, you can go ahead and screw all the parts together using your one and a half inch screws. Once you're done, your warp should make a U-shape like this. To build the breast assembly, grab these parts, as well as four one and a half inch flathead screws and four two inch flathead screws. Start by grabbing 6C and placing it on your left, 5B at the top and 6D on your right. Next, flip 5B making sure the part number faces toward you and on your left. Now, go ahead and grab 6C and turn it on its side 
so that the part number faces inward and at the bottom of the assembly. The unnumbered end of the part should attach to 5B. Do the same with 6D and then screw everything together using your one and a half inch screws. To finish it off, grab part 5D and place it so that the part number sits to your left and faces toward you like this. Now all you have to do is screw 5D into place using our 2 inch screws. Next, we're going to assemble our side brace. For this step, you'll need two of the long metal brackets, as well as these parts. You'll also need 10 washers, two of the two inch bolts, two of the two and a quarter inch bolts, two wing nuts, two of the three quarter inch sheet metal screws, and two hex nuts. We're going to work from the front of the loom, so the HD brand should be on your left. First, grab 7A and hold it so that the part number sits on the left hand side in front of you. Then, insert a 2 and a quarter inch bolt into the square hole on the top of the part, like this. Now, you can flip it so that the part number is facing down and place a washer onto the bolt. Next, insert the bolt into the right castle upright just above the lower bank of pulleys. To finish it off, put one washer on the other side of the castle upright and tighten the whole thing together with a wing nut. Now you can do the same thing with 7B, but this time put the bolt in through the bottom of the part and put a washer onto the bolt. And just like before, flip it over so that the part number faces down and insert the bolt into the left castle upright and cinch it together with a washer and a wing nut. Now, we're going to work on the lower side braces. First, grab 7C and flip it so that the part number is in front of you on the left hand side. Next up, grab one of those 3 quarter inch sheet metal screws and tighten it until just about a quarter of an inch is sticking out. This is where the ruler comes in handy. Next up, grab 7D and flip it so that the part number sits to your right. And just like before, screw a 3 quarter inch screw into the hole until it sits about a quarter of an inch out. Next up, put a 2 inch bolt into the square hole on the right castle upright, making sure the square head lines up with the square hole. Now, you can put a washer on the other side and place 7C onto the bolt with the part number facing down. Put one more washer onto the bolt and then grab one of those long metal braces. Go ahead and slide the metal brace onto the bolt, but make sure the U-shaped opening faces downward like this. Now just cinch it all together with a washer and a hex nut, making sure the square bolt glides into the square hole like this. To wrap up the side brace, do the same on the left hand side, making sure the part number faces down. And the U-shaped opening on the metal bracket also faces down. Now we're going to connect the breast assembly to the side braces. To do this, we'll need two wing nuts, two of the two inch bolts, two of the two and a quarter inch bolts, two hex nuts, and eight washers. To start off, flip the breast assembly around until the breast addition is facing the front of the loom. 
This is that long piece of wood that sits under the breastplate. Now you can slide the whole thing together making sure the side braces sit inside of the breast assembly. We're going to start on the lower left side brace. First, place a 2 inch bolt into the side brace and then put a washer on the other side. Now you can pull the breast assembly onto the bolt like this and put another washer and a hex nut on there. Once it's nice and tight, do the same on the lower right hand side. This one might take a bit of encouragement. Now you can go ahead and attach the upper side braces. This time we'll insert a two and a quarter inch bolt through the breast assembly and then place a washer on the other side. Then you can pull the side brace onto the bolt, put another washer on there, and remember that U-shaped opening on the metal bracket? Go ahead and pull that onto the bolt, cinching it all together with a wing nut. Now do the same to the other side, like this. Next, we're going to connect the warp to the castle. For this, we'll need two of the smaller metal brackets, the foot pedal labeled part 5, as well as two wing nuts, three hex nuts, one self-locking nut, 11 washers, one 3 inch bolt, a 2 inch bolt, and four 1 and a half inch bolts. We're going to work from the back of the loom, so the HD brand should be on your right. Grab your warp assembly and turn it so 6A is on your left. Then go ahead and string a 3 inch bolt through the warp assembly, putting a washer on it once it's through. Now you can line the bolt up with the hole to your left on the castle's foot. Once it's through, put another washer on there. Then grab part 5, turn it so that the part number is facing down, and slide it onto the bolt. One more washer and a self-locking nut and you're good to go. Just make sure the nut isn't too tight. The brake pedal should be able to move pretty freely. Now grab a 2 inch bolt and thread it through the other side of the warp assembly, putting a washer on the end of it. Similar to before, connect the warp assembly to the foot of the castle, using the hole to your right. Now, finish it off with a washer and a hex nut. Next, thread a one and a half inch bolt through the hole midway up the left side of your warp assembly. Then, throw a washer on there and grab one of the small steel braces. Just like before, make sure the U-shaped opening is facing down and attach the steel brace to the warp assembly with a washer and a hex nut. Then do the exact same on the other side. Now you can loosen the wing nuts on the middle part of the castle, lean the warp assembly back, and cinch the steel brace into place between the wing nut and the washer. Now do the same to the other side. To finish it off, go to the front of the loom and place a 1.5 inch bolt through the breast assembly, then add a washer and a wing nut. Do the same to the other side and you're done with this step. Folding your loom allows you to make room in your home or apartment when you're done weaving. And it could not be more simple.
First, loosen all the wing nuts on the loom. The steel braces at the front of the loom can be lifted off the bolts just like this. And the steel braces on the warp assembly can be lifted up like this. Now, brace your foot on the bottom of the loom. This will give you the leverage to lift the breast assembly to the top of the castle. At the same time, pull the warp assembly against the castle and attach the short steel brace to the bolt at the center of the breast assembly. Once you've tightened the wing nuts on the bolts, your loom is folded. At this stage, it's always good to check if your loom is level. First. Put your loom on a flat floor and try rocking it back and forth. If the loom begins to rock, it's probably not level. To fix this, simply loosen the screws on the foot that is causing the trouble and grab a scrap piece of wood and your hammer. Next, place the scrap piece of wood on the foot of the loom like this and give it a couple whacks. If the gap between your loom and the floor goes away, Retighten the screws, and your loom should be level. And this is a pretty good time to take a break. But if you're ready to keep assembling, loosen the wing nuts on the breast assembly, unfold the loom, and reattach the steel braces to their original bolts, tightening the wing nuts as you go along. To assemble the beater, we'll need two of our 2-inch flathead screws, three ray screws, two 3-inch bolts, two washers, and two wing nuts. We'll also need these parts. Grab 9A and place it so that the part number is on your left facing up. Now grab 6E and place it on top of 9A so that the part number sits at the bottom facing inward like this. Do the same with 6F. Next, grab a couple of your two inch screws and attach both parts to 9A like so. Now, you can go ahead and turn the whole assembly over and grab part 9B. This is what we call the race. Lay the race onto 9A and don't worry, there's no wrong way to place it. Just grab three race screws and drop them into the pre-drill holes, making sure they line up with the holes on 9A. Next, grab some 3 inch bolts and slide them into each slot at the top of 6E and 6F. Now, go ahead and grab 9C and with the part number facing down and to your right, drop it onto the bolts like this and fasten it together with a washer and a wing nut. And that's it. Put the beater to the side and we'll attach it to the loom later. Next, we're going to assemble the treadles. These are the parts you'll need for one treadle, but don't forget there are about six in total. First, grab your treadle and place it so that the T is facing down. Next, grab your shed rod and place the hooked end into the hole at the very end of the treadle. This next part is a little tricky, but I bet you can do it. Push the shed rod down so that the opening lines up with the pre-drilled hole in the wood. Now grab a screw and attach the two together. Now you can build five more treadles until you have six in total. For this next part, we'll need five wooden spacers, the treadle rod, the two wooden treadle blocks labeled L and R, four one and a quarter round head screws, as well as our six treadles. 
Grab a couple of those one and a quarter inch round head screws and attach the left treadle block to the floor brace so that the L is facing down and the block overhangs toward the castle like this. Now you can start sliding parts onto the treadle rod. Starting with one of your completed treadles, make sure the T is facing down and slide the treadle onto the rod. Now you can slide a spacer up against the treadle and then alternate treadle, spacer, treadle until you've filled up the whole rod with parts. Next, slide the left end of the treadle rod onto your left treadle block. Now grab your right treadle block and slide it onto the treadle rod, making sure the part label faces down. And now you can cinch it all together by attaching our right treadle block to the floor brace using our one and a quarter inch round head screws. Now it's time to build the harnesses. To build one harness, we'll need two metal harness sides, two screw hooks, eight half inch screws, and two wooden harness bars. First, attach the metal slide to the harness bars using our half inch screws. You can start by attaching the ends of the wooden bars to the harness sides. You may need to flip the bar around until it fits snugly into the harness side and the holes on both the side and the bar line up correctly. You'll need four screws in total. And by the way, if you're using a drill, make sure to use a low setting when screwing it in. Now flip your assembly so you're looking at one of the longer sides of the harness. In each corner there should be two holes, so grab a half inch screw and make sure to insert it into the hole furthest away from the edge of the harness. Do this four times until the harness has a total of eight screws in it. Now, flip the harness up like this and insert a screw hook into the remaining holes on the top of the harness. Using your fingers, tighten the screws until the threads aren't showing anymore. And by the way, you don't have to attach any hook screws to the other side of the harness. You only need them on one side. Now, go ahead and finish the remaining three harnesses. For this part, we'll need our heddles and heddle rods. Grab your pack of heddles and spread them flat onto the table. Now, cut the string on one side of the heddles. Next, tie each loose end of the string to the end of the two different heddle rods, like this. The string helps prevent the heddles from crossing each other as we slide them onto the heddle rods. Now, use your hands to divide the heddles into two roughly even groups. Each group will give us enough heddles for one set of heddle rods, so go ahead and start sliding half of the heddles onto the rods. They might need a little encouragement. Once the first group of heddles is on there, go ahead and cut the strings off near the end of the rods. Set the assembly aside and grab two fresh heddle rods. You should have two loose ends of the string just like you did before, so go ahead and tie them to the new heddle rods. Once you slide the heddles on, you should be left with just the string. So go ahead and snip that off. Now all you have to do is repeat this one more time and you should have four heddles all assembled. Next we're going to place the heddles into the harness. If you're right handed, make sure the colored end of your heddles is facing towards the hook screws. And if you're left handed, Flip them around so that they're facing the bottom of the harness. Now all you have to do is slide the rods into the slots on the side of the harness like this.
Once they're all in the slots, go ahead and lock them into place using these metal harness clips. Some of them require that you pull up, while others you just push down. Now we're ready to build our lambs. To build one complete lamb, we'll need the lamb itself, as well as eight screw eyes. Assembling a lamb is super simple. Just screw the eye screws anywhere you see a hole on the lamb. And once all the eye screws are tightly attached to the lamb, take your hex wrench and use the thin end to pry open the two screw eyes on the top of the lamb. But if you have some needle nose pliers, go ahead and use them for this step. When you're finished, the ends of the screw eyes you just opened should be pointing inward. Now all you have to do is repeat until you have four completed lambs. Next, we're going to attach our harnesses and lambs to the loom. For this step, we'll need 8 S-hooks, 4 adjustment chains, your black harness cable, and your gray lamb cable. We're going to work from the back of the loom, so the HD brand should be on your right. First, take the doubled end of your lamb cable, that's the gray one, and feed the looped end up through the pulley to your left on the bottom of the castle. Now, grab the long end and feed it over the third bank of pulleys all the way to your right. Then, take the short end and feed it over the second bank of pulleys so that it hangs below the loom. Now, you can go ahead and grab your lamb and hook it onto the two ends of the cable hanging below the loom, like this. Don't worry, it should hang on its own. Next, we're going to attach the harness to the top of the loom. Grab your black harness cable and feed the doubled end under the metal guard pins and over the pulley so that it hangs below the pulleys. Then you can go ahead and grab the long end of the cable and feed it under the guard pin on the other side of the loom and down over the pulley, like this. This next part requires a little finesse, so feel free to grab a buddy to help you out. But you can do it on your own if you want the challenge. Grab one of the metal chains and place an S-hook through the top of the chain. This is the part with the little rounded opening. Now, grab another S-hook and feed it through the second to last link on the chain, furthest away from the other S-hook. Next. Go ahead and attach the top S-hook to the doubled end of the black harness cable. Then, holding the chain in one hand, grab the doubled end of the gray lamb cable and hook it onto the remaining S-hook on the chain. To finish it off, grab one of your harnesses and hook it onto the two black cable loops hanging under the top of your castle. And don't worry, it should hang freely on its own. Before we wrap it up, make sure the lamb and harness cables sit on a single row of pulleys. At this stage, we want all of the cables to sit on the pulleys furthest away from us, like this. Now, if you pull down on the lamb, the harness should go up with very little resistance. Every so often, the harnesses might become a little off kilter. If that's the case, just pull up on the copper collar on the doubled end of the harness cable and pull the two sides of the cable in opposite directions, one down and the other up, and then pull the copper cinch back into place to lock it in. 
By the way, the chain is there to adjust the height of the harnesses. The harnesses should be about 8.5 inches from the top of the castle, but if they aren't, simply unhook the S-hook and insert it into a different link in the chain until you get your desired height. Now all you have to do is repeat, making sure that each set of lambs and corresponding harnesses sit in their own dedicated set of pulleys. There's a pulley for each harness and lamb. Now we're going to attach the treadles to the lambs. For this step, we'll be working from the front of the loom, so the HD brand will sit on your left. The way you attach the treadles to the lambs can determine the design of your weaving, so today we're going to show you how to do a simple tie-up. Now above each treadle is a row of eye screws, and each row corresponds to the treadle below it. So take your first snap chain and using the first row of eye screws, attach it to the first lamb and take your second snap chain and attach it to the third lamb. Then attach both chains to the first treadle. Next, grab a chain and attach it to the first lamb using the second row of eye screws. Then connect it to the second treadle. Now advance to the third row of screws and attach a snap chain to the second lamb feeding the chain directly down to the third treadle. Then, attach a snap chain to the third lamb using the fourth row of eye screws and connect it to the fourth treadle. After that, affix the snap chain to the fourth lamb using the fifth row of eye screws and attach the other end of the snap chain to the fifth treadle. Lastly, grab two snap chains and attach one to the second lamb and another to the fourth lamb, making sure to use the last row of eye screws and attach the other end of the snap chains to the final treadle. Installing the two beams could not be simpler. For this you'll need two to four small washers, two large washers, two of our three inch flathead screws, and one three quarter inch sheet metal screw. First, working from the front of the loom, grab your cloth beam and insert a large washer on the end, like this. Now, insert it into the hole on the upper right side brace. Next, push a 3 inch screw through the hole on the upper left side brace and place one or two small washers on it. Now, with one hand on your cloth beam and another on the screw, pull the screw back ever so slightly to leave enough room for the cloth beam to fit over the screw. This will trap the washers into place and prevent them from falling off. And last but not least, grab your screwdriver and screw the cloth beam into place. And by the way, just make sure not to over tighten the screw. The cloth beam should be able to turn freely without much effort. Next up, let's attach the pawl. First, make sure the tooth of the pawl is facing down. Then put the 3 quarter inch sheet metal screw through the pawl and place a washer on the other side. Then you can go ahead and screw the pawl into place. And that's it, you have a cloth beam. Now grab your warp beam and this time we'll work from the back of the loom. Place a large washer on the warp beam and thread it through the large hole on the side of the warp assembly. And just like before, Put a 3 inch screw through the pre-drilled hole on the opposite side. Put a washer or two on there and just like before, pull the screw back and pull the warp beam over the screw. Now you can go ahead and screw it together, 
making sure the warp beam can turn freely, like this. Now we're going to assemble the brake. For the warp brake assembly, we'll need a half inch round headed screw, a one inch screw, three small washers, a brake cable, a brake bar, a nylon brake cord, the spring anchor bracket, and the adjusting assembly. I know it's a lot of parts, but we'll take it one step at a time. First, remove the adjusting assembly from the bracket by unscrewing the wing nut on the end. Just make sure to remember which hole the bolt was going through once you remove it. Now, grab the spring anchor bracket and put the half inch screw through the hole that didn't have a bolt through it. Then, attach it to the small hole on the left side of the warp upright. It should sit at a slight angle like this. Next, hold the brake bar so that the smaller hole sits to your right. Then grab a 1 inch round head wood screw and push it through the hole in the middle. Then, thread a washer onto the other side of the brake bar. Now, grab your brake cable and thread the end without the chain through the screw. Next, put two more washers on and screw the entire thing into the hole right below the brake drum. It should be tight enough to be secure, but the brake bar should be able to move freely. Then, wind the brake cable clockwise around the drum two times, like this, making sure the cable doesn't cross itself. Now. Grab the adjusting assembly and loop the end of the spring through the chain on the end of the brake cable. Next, push the end of the spring through the smaller hole on the end of the brake bar, like this. You can pull the bolt down through the anchor bracket we attached earlier, and holding it taut, cinch it into place using that wing nut we removed earlier. The wing nut helps us adjust the braking power of the loom. So we can tighten the wing nut until about one inch of the thread sits below the bracket. Next up, grab your nylon brake cord and tie a simple overhand knot on the end of it. Now, feed the untied end through the large hole on the brake bar and snake the string in between the bolt and the warp assembly, like this. Then, you can feed the thread through the hole on the pedal closest to the brake assembly, coming from the top. Now, feed it back up through the brake pedal using the other hole. Now, to adjust the height of the brake pedal, pull the string until the pedal sits at about 5.5 inches from the ground. Once it's at your desired height, cinch the thread into place with an overhand knot. And that's it! If you push on the brake, the warp beam should turn freely in both directions. And when you release it, the warp beam can turn counterclockwise, but not the other way around. That was easily the hardest part of assembling the loom, and you did it! Attaching the wheels to the loom could not be easier, especially now that you're a loom builder. Simply grab two 3.5 inch carriage bolts and thread them through the holes on the left foot of the loom, like this. Then. Place two small washers onto the bolts and thread the wheels on the loom so that the notch on the back of the wheel assembly fits over the rounded bolt on the warp assembly. Now all you have to do is put a washer and a hex nut on each bolt and tighten the hex nuts until the wheels are snugly in place. Now we're in the home stretch. We just have a couple simple things we have to wrap up. First, as you probably guessed, the crank handle fits over either the warp beam or the cloth beam, so keep that handy when you want to start weaving. Last but not least, we're going to finish our beater. 
Pick the beater up and place it onto the metal pins on the lower side braces of the loom, making sure the bottom part of the beater fits in between the two washers on the side braces. There are two slots, so whichever slot you choose on one side, make sure it's the same on the other. Now, grab your reed and slide it into place. To finish it off, loosen the wing nuts on the top of the reed cap and drop it onto the reed like this. Tighten the wing nuts and there you have it, a finished beater. Another thing that comes in handy is the beater pin. It's a small metal pin that helps lock the beater into place like this. It is super useful when you're slaying the reed, but when you're not using it, you can place it into the small hole on the top of the upper left side brace. And that's it. Whether you know it or not, building this loom has made you a better weaver. You know this loom inside and out, but we can't wait to see what you create. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.